on a camera of the A6000 series, for example an A6400, A6100 or A6300 and you want to use it for video but you don't know how to get the best out of your camera, then take a few minutes to watch this video. Today I would like to give you 5 tips on how to set up and use your camera to easily create cinematic videos. Not everything I say today applies to all models especially the A6000 has less features when shooting video. In case you are new here, my name is Werner and I live in the Italian Alps. This channel is about filmmaking tutorials and reviews of consumer cameras. If you are interested in these topics, consider subscribing to the channel and have fun with this video. If you want to get the best out of a camera, you should be aware of its strengths and weaknesses. A particular strength of the cameras of the A6000 series is certainly the excellent image quality in 4K. 4K is captured without additional crop by recording the image in 6K and downsampling it to 4K. Another strength is the ability to capture video at 1080 and 120 frames per second with just a slight crop. This way you can create fantastic slow motion recordings. Or you can simply take cinematic close-ups for B-roll handheld as the slow motion stabilizes the image considerably. My first tip is that you use these two strengths of your camera for your videos. At the same time, you should be aware of the weaknesses of these two shooting modes. Shooting in 4K can lead to a horrible rolling shutter when you move the camera too fast. You should therefore avoid faster camera movements when shooting in 4K. It also helps if you stick to the 180 degree shutter rule. Your shutter speed should be twice as high as the frame rate. That is for 24 frames per second at 1 50th of a second. 4K has advantages over 1080, especially if your image contains a lot of small details, such as with wide landscapes. In close-ups with a shallow depth of field, the difference between 4K and 1080 is not so obvious. In these cases, you can easily use 1080 and use the high frame rate of 120 frames per second to stabilize the clip or to create cinematic slow motion shots. The lower image quality will not be as noticeable here. Of course, none of this applies to the A6000, which does not support 4K and 120 frames per second. To switch quickly between the two modes, I recommend you save the settings using the memory recall function. One for 4K and 24 frames per second and one for 1080 and 120 frames per second. My next tip concerns the focus. A good video shot is also characterized by the fact that your object is perfectly in focus. In most cases, the autofocus of your camera will be sufficient for this. The fantastic autofocus is definitely one of the strengths of the Sony APS-C cameras. In some cases, however, you should use manual focus for example when shooting close-ups, with camera movements or when there are objects in the foreground that could distract the autofocus. To be able to focus manually quickly and correctly, I have two tips for you. Assign one of the custom buttons with the function AF-MF control toggle. This way you can quickly switch between manual focus and autofocus without having to keep a button pressed all the time. This is a great advantage when filming. To be able to control the focus even better, I have also assigned the focus magnifier to one button. This way I can quickly enlarge the desired area and then adjust the focus manually. In standard movie mode, the image has a high contrast and saturation. There is basically nothing wrong with this. However, a cinematic image is also characterized by a high dynamic range. You might also want to adjust the colors of your shot to make it look even more cinematic. With the help of a picture profile, you can shoot with a flat color profile. This way you can increase the dynamic range. You also get more flexibility for your color grading. Personally, I usually use either Cine4 or Cine2 as Gamma and Cinema as color mode. The A6400 and A6600 have an additional gamma curve with HLG for recordings with high dynamic range. To make your shots look more cinematic, you should then reduce the details, especially when shooting in 4K. A sharp and detailed image may look good at first glance, but it doesn't look cinematic and professional. This is because the sharpness is partly digitally generated by the camera. Personally, I would therefore recommend that you reduce the sharpness under detail, for example to minus 5 or minus 7. The A6000 and A6100 do not support the mentioned picture profiles. Especially important for a great shot is a correct exposure. Of course, the automatic mode of the camera can help you with this. In contrast to photography, as mentioned before, you should make sure that the shutter speed is about twice as high as the frame rate. This way, you will create an appropriate motion blur. Since you should often use a high aperture for a cinematic image, you will have the problem that the image will be too bright for daytime shots. You can solve this problem with a variable ND filter. I will put some links for suitable filters in the video description. I also want to give you a tip on how you can achieve a correct exposure even in bright daylight with the rather weak LCD screen. By using a histogram. 
The histogram shows how the dark and light areas are distributed over the image. So you can see at a glance if you are losing details because the image is exposed too bright or too dark. You can easily display the histogram and check it either on the LCD screen or in the viewfinder. Finally, I would like to give you a few tips for the right lenses to enable cinematic shots on a camera of the A6000 series. For current offers for all lenses, I will put links in the video description. Probably one of the best lenses for shooting video is the Sigma 60mm 1.4. 60mm is good for wide shots and for example also perfect for travel videos. With a maximum aperture of 1.4, you can create a cinematic shallow depth of field despite the wide angle. The lens has a fantastic sharpness and a very short minimum focusing distance. This allows you to take cinematic close-ups, for example for B-roll. If your camera doesn't have IBIS and you don't want to miss image stabilization, you should take a look at the Sony 35 1.8. This lens is also good for shooting video and because of the high maximum aperture, it is also great for cinematic shots with a shallow depth of field. On the other hand, if you're interested in a zoom lens, I recommend the Sony 18 105 f4. With this lens, you can also create very cinematic shots, especially at 105mm and f4. For an overview of all interesting lenses for filmmaking, I recommend my respective video. Have a look at it if you want to get a better overview. So let us briefly recap in a few sentences what you should take away from this video. Use the strengths of your camera where they make sense. The fantastic 4K image for shots with lots of detail. 120 frames per second for cinematic close-ups. Focus manually if necessary. Use the AF-MF control toggle function to switch quickly between manual focus and autofocus. Use the focus magnifier to adjust the focus precisely. Use a flat color profile for more dynamic range and flexibility in color grading. Use the histogram for optimal exposure. And very important, use the right lens for cinematic shots. And with this, I would like to say goodbye for today. If the video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback and see you next time.